Welcome to our video series on Microsoft Word and word processors. In this video, we're looking at export and import. Now, what does that mean in the context of Word or an Office document? Well, export means we are sending our current document to another format or to another place where that program could maybe use it. So that, for example, saving our Word document as a PDF. That would be an example of exporting it. Importing means we are currently in our Word document and we want to bring information that's from outside into our document, either from a text file or maybe you want to bring it in from a spreadsheet. So that's bringing other data into your spread, into your word processor. So let's have a look at what that actually means. So first of all, when we are exporting, that means we are going to save as, which in other words, we're going to create a different type of document. And there are lots of reasons to save as. Maybe you want to save a document for the first time. Well, you can use the save as option for that. That will definitely help you to save it for the first time. But there are other ways that you can use save as. You can use it, for example, if you want to save it with a different name. Maybe you've got a current document and you must save it as a different version of it, so a different name, and say so this is going to give it a different name. Another option would be you want to save it in a completely different location. Maybe keep the name, but you want to just save it in a different place. Then you can use the save as option there. But the other one, which is what we're going to focus on particularly today, is how we can save it as a different file type. So that's what we're going to want to look at today. So yeah, I've got a random Word document with some random text, and we're going to click on the File option over here. So when I click on File now, I don't even have to go to Save As. I can go straight to Export, and if I click on Export, we've got options to create this document as a PDF or an XPS document, or we can change its type to one of these options. Now, what do these mean? Well, you can save it as a Word document, or you can save it as an older version of a Word document, maybe the previous formats. Maybe you want to use it in a program called Open Office. Maybe you've got that at home and you want to save it as that, or you want to save it as a template. Maybe this has got a nice little letterhead, and every time you write a letter, you want the same letterhead, so then you could save it as a template. Or you can use one of these options. You can save it as plain text. You can save it as rich text. Um, you can save it as an actual HTML file, and there are lots of other options that you can do. Or you can just click on Save As or go to the Save As option. So let's click on Save As and see what it comes up. So when we click on Save As, this dialog pops up. And we can save it when we click over here as other options. So we can see there's macro enabled documents. We've got uh, PDFs. We've got all these different options. So let's say I want to save it as a PDF. So I can select PDF and now I'll save it in the same folder and I will call this um, converted. So I'm going to give the name converted. And there are options available. Which options will depend on what you're saving it as. So yeah, I'm, this is PDF options. We can specify which pages. Maybe I only want the first page to be printed um, or to be saved. And then you can specify them if you want. Um, so you can do that. And we can click on Save. Well, there you can see the PDF document appears in the same folder with all my other files. And if I actually click on the PDF, it's opened up a bit over here. So let's open up there. You can see it's exact same text and you can see it's only one page because that's all that I wanted. So that's an example of saving it as a completely different file type. So if we clicked on file and I go to save as, we'll get these options over there. Um, when you select, there are lots of options. The same thing appear over there. You can go to options if you want. And when you go to options, it opens up this dialog. And then just a little thing, if you're saving it as a Word document, you get these little tools here as well, which allow you to compress pictures. Or if you're saving it as an HTML document, you get some web options. You can map a network graph, some, some general options, which will actually take you basically to the options that have come appear over there. And save options. If you go to save options, it gives you options to put on a password. Maybe you want to protect the file. You can only open it if you've got a specific password. So we've got videos on that. You can look at those videos. I'll put links in the description, but those are the lovely options you've got available whenever you save as. So those are examples of exporting. So let's talk now about importing a file or data. Now, before we talk about importing, we need to understand the difference between embedding and linking. And we'll explain when we get to an example. So let's talk about embed. Well, what does embed mean? That means when you update the source, the object doesn't change. If you embed something into your document, then what it does is it actually puts like a, a copy of it into the document. If you update it, it doesn't change the original. Um, or if you change the original, it won't change your Word document. But it basically puts a copy of it in there. So the last nice thing about this, it makes the file larger. But then if you move that file around, it doesn't have to worry about it always being attached to that link. So embedding means taking a file and actually putting a copy of it 
into your Word document. Now, a link is slightly different. A link means if you update the source, you also update the object that you've linked it to. So it's not actually in your Word document. It's just connected. And if you change the original, then you will see that reflected in your main Word document. This obviously makes the file smaller. It doesn't make the file as large. But the problem with that, if I move this particular file to a different location, maybe on a flash drive, sometimes it won't be able to access the original file that it was linked to because it's on a different computer. So how do we do this in Word? So here's my Word document. And first of all, I'm going to show you. I've got a document. I've got a little some text files here. I've got a text file with some data, information. I think it's about colors if I open it. Here's some lovely information about colors. So if I want to insert that into my Word document, you can do that. I can straight away just, I want to insert it maybe here on this line over here. Let's begin to put it over there. And I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to come all the way to this side. And there's going to be where we're going to do all of our importing. And I'm going to get text from a file. And it, does, it can be from a word, another Word document, it can be from anywhere. So here we go. So let's have a look. I'm going to come over here. Now, obviously, I can't see that text file because it's only looking for Word documents. But if I went and said, hey, I want to actually look for all files or just the text files, ah, there's the data. So I can click on it. Um, if it's like, for example, a spreadsheet, you can actually specify the range of which cells you want to copy. But this is just, I want everything that's in there. And I'm going to go insert. You can also insert it as a link, which means if you change the original, this will be reflected in the actual file. So I'm going to insert it normally. So there we go. It's going to insert that text. But because I didn't insert it as a link, if I went and changed the original data in this data file, it would not reflect here because it's not linked. It's almost like an embedding there. So that's how we can get text into our lovely Word document. The other thing we can do, so let's go to a brand new spot over here. So I'm going to come over here and go, okay, let's go and click on, we're going to now insert an object. Okay, we can insert an embedded object, such as another Word document or Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to click on this. And now you can put a brand new particular file in here if you want to. Like create a brand new file. Maybe if you want to create an image. Maybe you want to put a chart in. Then it'll allow you to change the details. So this would be a way of putting it into your actual document. Or you, if you've got the file already, I've got, for example, over here, I've got a chart. I've got some uh, some data that's in a spreadsheet. So I'm actually going to go, hey, create from a file. So I want to go choose the file that I want to create as. And go, okay, let's go browse for that file. So there it is. So that's the one I want. I want the charts one. So I'm going to insert it. So it's going to say, okay, we're going to insert this. Now, there are lots of options here. I can, if I leave it like this. Okay, that means it will embed the file, which means it'll put a copy of it here. That means if I change the original, it won't change the data that's here. If I want to be able to change the original and let it reflect here, then I will link the file if I want to do that. You can also display it as an icon. I'm going to do that option first. So it's going to look something like that. You can change what icon it is. But if I do that, if I click on that, boom. And then you'll see this little thing appears. It looks like a little icon. There we go. So now I can actually click on that particular file and it will open up a copy of that spreadsheet. Why do I say a copy? Because I didn't link it. If I linked it, it would open up the original. So what happens if I don't want it to look like that? I actually want the actual file. So we're going to go and do that again. Insert an object. And now we're going to go get that exact same file. There's the charts. Insert it. And we're going to insert it as a link to the file. So if I do that and go, okay, let's insert it. And so it's going to try and put that particular, I've got a nice little um, spreadsheet in there that obviously you can't see all of the data and all that. So we're going to link the object. You can open the, you can open the link from here. You can convert it and stuff like that. You can specify all those things. We can update the link. And that's how you would update the link on that side. So I just went and set the print area. So that we can try to fit it into our page. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to say, hey, let's change that to a 10. So I'm changing the original file now. So I've changed the original file. You can see our chart is very different. I'm going to save. Now, if I come to my file over here, you'll see it hasn't changed. But I can right click on it and I can update the link. And there you can see it reflects the changes that we had in the original one. So you can always right click. You can go obviously open up that file if you want. You can edit the link if you want. So this allows you to be able to, I want to edit the link. So you're editing the data in the link. 
So that's the one option. The other option, if I click here, I can go to to con or details of the links. I can convert it if I want, or I can go to the links, the actual details of the links, where I can break the link if I want to break it. I can update it. I can change the source. You can do all these settings over here. So that's what you do with a linked file. Now, if I embed something, we showed you that it was an embedding over there, for example. So that doesn't change the original file. So what happens if I come to my spreadsheet and I click on this chart and I copy it? I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to use my paste options now. So when I paste it, I can paste it as a picture. I can paste special. So when I paste it, I can paste it as a chart, Excel chart object, for example. Um, I can display it as an icon as well. I can paste it and that will embed it, which means it'll put its own version into this particular file. So let's go see, it's going to paste it now. There it is. There it's been pasted. So I can click on it and I can make it just a bit smaller. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. And then uh, further down. So that's let's make this text red so we can just see that that was the embedded one. So by the red text is the embedded one. By the green text, let's make this text green just so we can identify. I'm going to now put a linked version of it. So now I'm going to paste it again, paste special. But this time I'm going to paste it as a link. So when I paste it as a link, it'll also paste it. So there we've got two charts that look exactly the same. I made the one just a bit smaller. However, if I come to the original and I change it back to its original value, so I can go 70. Now our chart's different. I'm going to save it. Go to our files. Now this is the one, the red one was the one that didn't allow us to change. If I click there, there's no option to update it. Do you see that? There's no update. That's, that's just how it is. It didn't change. But our, this one, you can see it's already changed. It already changed. It changed automatically. You can right click on it and you can edit the data. You can go edit all of that data and so on. You can edit in Excel. So there we go. You can see that it's changed automatically. And if I go up to this one, if I right click on this one and update the link, there we go. See, it's updated according to what the original looked like. Now, if I come here to file and I go here to file info, I'll get all the details about the particular file and I can come right to the bottom here and there's also a place where you can edit the links of the files. And there you can see we've got two links. We've got that little worksheet and we've got that chart. So if you want to break the links, especially if you take this, for example, to another computer and it can't find that particular file because you forgot to copy that file and you want to and it's giving you error messages, you can then come here and obviously break the links if you need to. So there we go. Those are basically the constructs or the, the concepts that you need to know about inserting a link or inserting embedded a file. So remember, if I insert it, like for example, this is a copy of a file, uh, which means that file will not be will not change if the original changes. But this obviously will copy it straight into this. So this file will be bigger because that file is like a copy here, where this one is an example of we are linking it which means it's linked to the original data. It's not actually in here, but if I change the original, it'll reflect the changes here as well if I update it. Support the channel by clicking on that subscribe button, leaving likes and comments, even if you turn off notifications so that it doesn't bother you. But make sure you subscribe. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.